believing that data have independent power and meaning of their own is a superstitious belief. So believing that your thoughts, your emotions, your sensations have their own independence, that they're somehow independently generated or they have a nature of their own, that's just a superstitious belief. And we can actually see the, um, the downfalls in believing in this and believing that data have power and influence of their own. You can see very directly in your life how that's affected your life. So in the Balance Shoe Training, we're relying on something that it doesn't need any kind of belief system or philosophy or written thing to uphold it. To identify open intelligence very directly, we can just stop thinking for a moment just to see what remains. When you stop thinking for a moment, you have the power to know what's looking. This powerful open intelligence from which all data, all the thoughts, the emotions, experiences, anything we can label, anything we can't label, this is the space from which they all arise, in, of, as, and through. So all data, their true definition, their essence is open intelligence. Just like the images in a crystal ball are essentially the crystal ball, and they're inseparable. Data are inseparable from open intelligence, like the breeze is inseparable from the air. So that's good to know because, I was saying, you can pinpoint the downfalls in believing in data descriptions. So just take anxiety, for instance. If you completely indulge in anxiety, you know what the stories bring up and then the, the limitations that you seem to experience. So anxiety can produce a lot of tension in the body, it can produce a lot of paranoid thoughts, it can produce a whole range of emotions, and it just leads to a whole distraction of, of data streams where we don't find an openness, where we don't find an okayness, we don't find an empowering way to live our lives and to empower others. You know, I know this because I've experienced a lot of anxiety in my life, and I know what happens when I either indulge in my anxiety, you know, it just created all those stories I mentioned, so feeling very limited and then always looking for a cure for my anxiety, or then I tried to replace it with the antidote so I wouldn't have anxiety, so that I could feel relief, freedom, and empowerment, or I would just try to avoid it totally. You know, avoiding it, like saying, oh, I can't get up and speak today because I'm so anxious, I need to go for a walk. You know, that's the actual avoidance of an afflictive thought, emotion, or sensation. So these three, three strategies, indulging, avoiding, or replacing, are what we engage in most of the time. And that's what creates all this belief that there's suffering due to the, the, the uh, appearance. So in this training, we take short moments of identifying open intelligence and we let the data be as they are. So right now, if you have anxiety, just let it be as it is without indulging, avoiding, or replacing. And we can do that for short moments with anything we experience. Even if it seems challenging, you can always rely on a short moment of emphasizing open intelligence rather than emphasizing the data. This is a very powerful practice. Because like I said, open intelligence and data are inseparable. They are one and the same. When we identify open intelligence, we see that it's unaffected. Just like the, the sky is unaffected by a meteor shower that goes through it, or if a supernova explodes. You see how space is unaffected by that appearance, by that circumstance. Open intelligence, your power to know, our power to know what's looking, is unaffected by the whole constellation of thoughts, emotions, sensations. But it takes some time to, to see that at the basis, you know, to really see that we are unaffected by the appearances. It's going to take some practice to see that anxiety, for instance, really doesn't have a power of its own. 
that it's actually the beneficial power of open intelligence shining forth in whatever way it looks for you. When you start to let everything be as it is, you see there's great, a great opportunity first and foremost with afflictive states. Afflictive states is a great motivator to really do something about it. You know, that's what I initially was doing. I had so much afflictive, so many afflictive thoughts, emotions, sensations that I didn't want to feel them. So I was always indulging, avoiding, replacing. And I came to the point where I realized that didn't work. You know, there was no amount of replacing that I could do to keep that anxiety away. There was no amount of indulging in it that would transform it into something positive. You know, there was just, it was futile. So that's great when you find that indulging, avoiding, and replacing does not work. And then your only other option is to let it be as it is. And what happens when you let it be <coughs> as it is? You start to experience, it's like letting a heavy load fall to the ground. With tension right now, if we just stop labeling it as negative energy, you just allow yourself to relax as the tension. Don't try to do anything with it. Just let it be as it is. It's the powerful energy of open intelligence. You know, the more we rely on short moments, the more skillful means open up. Open intelligence is always continuous. It's inexhaustible benefit. So short moments is just accessing this intelligence, this openness. So again and again, just take short moments and emphasize open intelligence. And you start to see the emphasis on all the descriptions naturally shifts more and more to open intelligence. In open intelligence, there's complete mental and emotional stability. You can have all kinds of raging thoughts going on right now. When you let them be as they are, do you see there's actually mental and emotional stability? If you're just trying to rearrange everything, it's just more rearranging. So, you know, for me, it was like the first short moment I took, I could give up my striving to relax. I was always trying to relax. I just let everything be as it was, and there was an instant relief a soothing energy, even though I was still full of anxiety. You know, that's very powerful to see. Open intelligence, inseparable from that anxiety, and then you see the anxiety actually isn't, it's not such a, an enemy anymore. Decision making, I mean, that creates, for me, it created so much strife. You always want to make the right decision, and you fear you won't. Maybe not always, but you know, for big decisions, it's like sometimes we, we put so much time and energy into it, and then you just you feel completely lost. It's like there are way too many options. In my experience, I just found more and more discernment. You know, decision making becomes easy when we start to let everything be as it is. You know, we're making decisions all the time anyway. It's just certain ones grab our attention and we start analyzing and just getting into a whole mess about it. But it's not like, you know, it's not like you'll know... Okay, I'll put it this way. For me, I just let indecision be as it was, if I didn't know. I just actually allowed myself to relax with not knowing what decision to make. Seeing that the world wasn't going to end if I don't make this decision now. You know, we don't need to take that to an extreme now, but it's like, does the world end if you don't make this decision now? And actually, we can start to prioritize what is the most important decision we can ever make. Either emphasize data and get lost in the description, or emphasize open intelligence. Those are the, that's the most important choice we can ever make. Relying on open intelligence provides all the beneficial solutions we'll ever need. Relying on open intelligence is synonymous with relying on the four mainstays. So you heard the description of the four mainstays. Short moments repeated many times, they go continuous. Open intelligence is continuous. Relying on the training media, 
The training media is nourishment, it's actual empowerment. The texts only ever direct us back to open intelligence. They don't provide a lot of abstract instructions. They just always bring us back to reality. They align us with reality. Just reading one sentence from the text has the power to just reset ourselves to our native beneficial condition. So, you know, go back to the back at our information table and grab one of the books and start reading it. The instructions are total empowerment. So, when you identify open intelligence, maintain open intelligence. Just maintain emphasizing it when you, when you naturally remember to do so. So, if something comes up like indecision and then that relates to everything else, anger, anxiety, jealousy, you know, it just brings up a whole lot of stuff. Just maintain open intelligence throughout that whole flow of data. Very powerfully, you start to see that, you know, those the data, they self-release. Like the flight path of a bird in the sky, just it self-releases, it leaves no trace. That whole story we built up, it just resolves naturally. And you see this in short moments, so maintain open intelligence when you naturally remember, remember to do so, rather than indulging, avoiding, or replacing. We don't need the complicated either, you know, if you want more complicated instructions, you won't get that here. It, it doesn't make sense to complicate something that is already naturally present in our birthright, who we are. <coughs> That's why we always talk about short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, they go continuous. You can test it every single moment of your life, whenever you, wherever you are. It's great to do it in this training setting because that's what people are here doing. And then when you leave the training setting, and you're in whatever circumstance you're in, test out short moments of allowing all the data to be as it is in a very natural way, you know, you just, the way you use your mind. Our mind is completely beneficial. You know, we've been thinking that the content of our mind is somehow not beneficial. You know, I mean, we're afraid of being reprimanded, of being kicked out, of disowned, abandoned. All these kinds of things that just, you know, they've seem like there's something wrong with us and something wrong with everyone else. So the difference in this practice is it's completely effortless. When you let everything be as it is, you know, it doesn't require anything other than letting it be as it is. You know, we have a full support structure on hand for everyone who's interested. The four mainstays are totally available, so you have a lifestyle choice available to you to support you in taking short moments to see that all of your data are actually the, the pure benefit of open intelligence. You know, it doesn't require a special breathing instruction, it doesn't require a special posture, diet, clothing, location on the planet. It doesn't require any of that stuff. It doesn't require that you become any particular way. You know, I used to think, well, I need a different set of circumstances in order to recognize natural perfection or open intelligence. I thought that I would need to have better thoughts, better emotions, and, you know, just get rid of all obstacles before I could realize natural perfection as who I am. But actually, I found that all of my data, no matter where I was, no matter what thoughts I was having, no matter what I was eating, no matter what I was thinking, all the great opportunity to recognize my exalted nature, how there's nothing wrong with my data, and to see that I have the power to take complete responsibility. Before, I was just acting irresponsibly. Anxiety comes up and just being irresponsible about it, being distracted, blaming, judging, criticizing, disempowering, being a victim. And 
so we don't have to live like that anymore. And in this practice, you see the results in many other people as well. Like complete mental and emotional stability in so many people, regardless of their circumstance. You know, they can be going through anything and everything, yet you see there's a complete stability about them. It's not like they're avoiding life. They're not some kind of zombie. They're just fully available, living life. A culture of gratitude, respect, and appreciation for all the community members, and for everyone, for that matter. So you see very directly the results. That's the thing I saw that was different about Balanced View. Everything else I was in, everybody was striving to be compassionate, to be this, to be that, and I didn't see the results. And here we see the results. We see the results here. All over the globe we, we see the results. And most importantly is for you to check out, do you start to see the results? Just check in. Do you start to see it's easier to let things be as it is? If it's not, then turn to the mainstays. Read some text. Talk to a trainer. You know, ask questions in the open meeting. Ask questions in the trainings. And then talk to community members. How is it like for you? You know, if you experienced a lot of anxiety and indecision, indecisiveness, you know, how, how does it look for you now? Most people will just say, well, it's just not a problem anymore. It's just decisions come instantaneously, spontaneously. There's a complete flexibility. And our, and our motivation is really to benefit ourselves and benefit others. That self-centeredness, it really is outshone. We weren't trying to do anything about self-centeredness. We're just letting that be as it is, and more and more we open up. So check it out in the community, you know, just look what everyone's up to here. It doesn't mean that you completely change everything about your life and conform to some idea of what you think this is. And that wouldn't work either. So if you're trying to conform to an idea of open intelligence, let that be as it is. <coughs> just let that flow on by and just rest naturally when you naturally remember to do so. Don't try to change anything about your data and start to see if there's more of a flow. You know the term going with the flow. This is the real meaning of going with the flow. Not trying to rearrange the flow in any way. And you see that you can skillfully maneuver that flow. Being able to surf the flow very powerfully, very beneficially. Very authentically. I'd like to learn how to surf. So. Surf in the reality. It can really be like that, just surfing reality, where it doesn't feel like you're always face-planting into the grief. <laughs> the pain of believing in data is like face-planting into that wreath, and you just want to run away and not try it again. So it's good to see that indulging in data just doesn't work. So test out short moments of letting everything be as it is. <laughs>